Hi, this is Graham Robertson of Beloved Brands. And today we're gonna to talk about how to write a brand strategy statement that you can use in your plan. First, I wanna introduce you to the five elements of strategy. The first thing I wanna see in any strategy is a vision of what you want for the future. I think of this as an aspirational stretch target. And I look at this as thinking about what is the ideal state five or 10 years from now. Next, I wanna look at what resources we'll invest and against which strategic program we'll do. The third element I wanna focus on is the identified opportunity. And if I can look at things that will make your brand bigger, then I can latch on to whether it's a consumer trend, a new technology, or a new channel to enter. The fourth element is this market impact. And since this is for a brand strategy, I wanna see something happen in the marketplace that I can really see and really move forward, whether that's establishing a reputation around my brand positioning, building a bond with my consumers, or moving consumers along their journey. And the fifth element is the performance result that pays back. I can look at this as power or profit. In terms of power, I think of that as stored energy for the future. And in terms of the profitability, I look at managing my revenue and my cost as I look to manage my brand. As I wanna structure these statements, I come back to how I might lay out these five elements. And the first thing I wanna do over on the left-hand side here is every brand does need that vision for the, what it wants to achieve in the future. Then I ask these key issue questions. I call them interruptive because they're really hard to answer. And these are the ones that are gonna define what's in the way of achieving that vision and set up our strategic answers to those questions. Over on the right-hand side, you can see our strategic flywheel that I'll take you through in the coming slides. We've got the other four elements from that five elements that I just showed you a minute ago. We've got the strategic programs, the focused opportunity, the market impact, and the performance result. And I'm gonna to refer to this as the A, B, C, D approach because I wanna take each of these elements and build out a brand strategy statement. So if I look at my Gray's Cookies example, our brand vision up at the top is to be a healthy cookie that generates the craving, popularity, and sales of a mainstream cookie. I'm thinking what's in the way, I'm a few years in right now, and maybe at this point, I wanna shift Gray's from a product-led launch into an idea-led brand that can own this guilt-free idea. And if I can own that brand idea, then I can be even bigger. Next, I wanna layer in the other four elements of the strategy, and this is how I build out my statements. The strategic program, I'm gonna communicate my new guilt-free positioning the opportunity I see is to meet the changing needs of consumers, in this case, a proactive preventer target. The third element, the C, is the market impact. I want to attract and tempt these consumers to try grace. And then the performance result is to drive a higher market share. And this is the A, B, C, D approach. And that gives me an overall statement of communicating our guilt-free positioning to meet the changing needs of our proactive preventers, to attract and tempt them to try grays so I can drive a higher market share. If I look at how I wanna structure these strategy statements, the first area is to think about is I have these available resources, money, time, people, and partnerships, and I can apply them against these strategic programs, whether that's brand positioning, communicating the story, 
managing the purchase moment, launching new innovation, or creating a consumer experience. Next, I wanna think about the focused opportunity of where I can really leverage and make my strategy even stronger. So I'm seeing something in the marketplace already happening that I can take advantage of, whether that's changing consumer needs, some kind of competitive battle that I might be involved in, an innovation that's come to the marketplace, influencer opinions, new technology, or new channels. The third element is the market impact. And I can move consumers along their journey from awareness to purchase, repeat, and loyalty. I can tighten the bond with our consumers and moving that relationship from the unknown to indifferent, like it, love it, and beloved. Or I can establish my brand positioning with the target. And that leads me to the perform performance result of either more power or more profit. And I can have power over my consumers or channels or competitors or even my influencers and suppliers. And this is investing for the long term, that relationship. And then in terms of the profitability, I can charge a premium price or get consumers to trade up. I can manage my costs. I can look at increasing my market share or I can enter new markets. If I come back to the strategy, this kind of thinking helps me to structure my overall strategic statement. I'm going to invest money in establishing the brand positioning. That's my A, communicate Gray's new guilt-free positioning. What I'm gonna take advantage of is these changing consumer needs in the marketplace as we see consumers shifting to more healthy options. When I go down to the C part of this statement, the market impact, I wanna move consumers somewhere along their journey. I'm gonna focus on consideration and trial to get them to try it. And then down there at the bottom, I want to build a bond, a tighter bond with these consumers and have a power in that relationship and using that to help steal market share. So that helps my thinking and how I might structure my statement. Another way to write brand strategy statements using our same ABCD approach is to look at the different strategic programs available to us. What am I going to invest in? Who am I gonna target as new category consumers or competitive consumers or current consumers? I could look at my focus of what I'm gonna take advantage of, those changing consumer needs, the competitive battles, the market impact. I want to attract, inform, close, service, or delight. And then some of the other things I can look at moving those consumers to see and desire the brand, to be tempted to learn more, to buy, to repeat, or to recommend to a friend. And then the next area I can look at is the performance result and how that plays out with the pathway to that payback, whether that's tighten the bond, gain a competitive advantage, those things might lead to more power for future profits. I could look at things that are connected to new to the category or competitive users. That would drive more penetration. In terms of frequency, I could go for higher usage from our current or a higher share of requirements. And then I could charge higher prices, whether that's getting them to pay premium prices or trading them up and then entering new markets. And if I start to layer in my overall strategy statement with this kind of thinking, the first thing I wanna do is communicate that guilt-free positioning to new consumers. So I'm investing in communication and that's to these new category consumers. I wanna meet their changing needs. That's the opportunity in B. I want to attract so that they will be tempted to try Grace. And then I want to look at those that are new to the, you know, new to the category to gain penetration and in the end, gain market share from that. 
Now the benefit of these statements of while they're a little long winded, what we can see here is that I can manage my entire brand based on these type of statements. Within the A, that allows me to set my marketing budget, maybe structure my team or even choose the right partner. In this case, we're gonna need some money and we probably need an ad agency uh, to help us create this work. Under B, I can build on my core strengths so I can look at what I'm trying to build on here, build with the consumer or win the competitive battles. Next with the C, this is where I can start to measure uh, the actual uh, impact on the marketplace. And this will set up my desired response that might show up in my creative brief. It'll help me to align with my sales team of what objective I'm trying to do, as well as it allows me to judge and measure the work that comes back. So if my agency shows me advertising work I can start to say, is this gonna attract and tempt our consumers? That's really what I want to do here. And then finally, I can look at the overall business result, and that will be, in this case, driving market share will help me to set sales growth and forecasting. I can drive my margin performance out of this strategy. It'll also help me to set up market share goals of what I want to achieve. So this type of technique allows me to manage my entire brand. Now in an average brand plan, I'd probably have three of these statements and then I would build my plan around these strategies. And what we have within our training program is we have some of the most common brand strategies, whether that's communication, new products, usage frequency, defense plans against competitors, and some of our fictional brands. And then we also look at some of the more famous strategies, whether that's Apple, Starbucks, Special K, or even Taylor Swift down there at the bottom. This is another video that's lined up about our marketing training program. And for ambitious marketers, our program will teach those marketers about strategic thinking, brand positioning, brand plans, advertising decision-making, and brand analytics. We have marketing training for teams, and we have an individual program, which is our virtual mini MBA that you can learn at your own pace. All of this is part of our beloved brands programs, whether it's our consulting, our marketing training, or our books, which are available to you. Thank you for listening and we'll see you on our next session.